Welcome to MaxDCU Training Part 47. This video we're going to be taking a look at working with our rally style anti-lag. Now our rally anti-lag is going to differ from our normal anti-lag we can apply to our launch control or to the rolling anti-lag feature that we talked about in our previous training tutorial. In either of those situations, when we're stationary or when we're rolling, and we want to build boost, we would utilize the anti-lag when we're at full throttle conditions to retard the spark timing to achieve the boost pressure we're trying to reach. In the rally anti-lag, this is going to be where it differs. It's going to actually be able to generate boost pressure when we're in lift throttle conditions. So if we're coming into a tight hairpin turn on a rally stage and we're lifting our foot off the throttle, we want the boost to be there when we come back on the throttle. And that's what the rally anti-lag can accomplish. It's going to be differing in the way that we set this up again from our normal anti-lag type features when we're stationary or rolling. I'm going to show you how to work with all of the programming details. It's actually quite simple, but it is going to be very, very effective. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check out working with our rally anti-lag. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our rally style anti-lag programming within our Max ECUs. Our rally style anti-lag is going to be different than a launch control anti-lag or the rolling anti-lag we've covered in separate training tutorials in this training course. The anti-lag when you're stationary or when you're rolling, that's going to be assuming you're at full throttle and we're trying to generate the boost as fast as possible. When we're dealing with a rally style anti-lag, that's going to be when we're lifting our foot off the throttle, let's say mid-corner, to try to slow down maybe the power band or the power delivery to the wheels to be able to corner a little bit faster, um, or if we're just generally just lifting the shift. In these situations, if we close our throttle plate down, that's going to be shutting down the amount of airflow into the engine, which will then have less that it's going to be combusting, and then less it's going to be sending out through the exhaust manifold into the turbo turbine housing and spinning the turbine wheel. Slowing down the turbine wheel spinning slows down the compressor wheel spinning, and as a result, we build less boost. This is going to be a natural occurrence when we have a turbocharged engine and we're lifting to shift. We can utilize the rally anti-lag to retard the timing heavily and then either open our throttle plate up if we're drive-by wire when we're off of our pedal assembly in the car. So we have our accelerator pedal position sensor and we have our throttle plate actual drive-by wire throttle plate movement, they're independently linked, we can open up our throttle plate on a lift shift condition where we're going to allow a bunch of air into the engine and we can retard the timing back pretty heavily. So in this situation it will have a, uh, a combustion effect and it will push that combustion out into the exhaust stroke which will spin the turbine wheel faster and keep us up on boost. Now if you don't have a drive-by wire throttle body assembly you can also use an idle control motor or the normal idle control routine. We can flare up and open that idle control motor pretty substantially and allow a lot of airflow bypass into the engine again have that same kind of effect as we would with the throttle plate opening on a drive-by wire throttle body assembly. So what we're trying to accomplish here just so the nuts and bolts of this is open the throttle plate or open our idle control motor to allow a whole bunch of air to come in the engine when we're in lift throttle conditions. We're going to be rev limiting the engine at a particular uh, RPM that we're lifting at or a particular RPM range we're going to be operating at because if we let a bunch of air in the engine that'll be just like a huge vacuum leak. If we don't have a way to limit the engine it'll try to overrun and try to actually rev itself back up which we don't want to have happen. So the ignition limiter is going to be applied and it'll try to hold us at a particular amount of engine speed so we don't have an RPM flare. We're going to be going in and having a whole bunch of air at it. We're going to be pulling back our spark timing heavily as that air is being added. That'll create combustion in the engine and by having late spark timing it'll be pushing the majority of that combusted exhaust gas really late into the exhaust stroke which will put a lot more pressure and temperature in our exhaust manifold which will put a lot more than pressure to spin the turbine wheel faster and then we'll find we build more boost. So essentially what we're after is increasing the airflow, retarding the timing, cutting our spark timing and a result of all three of those we can build boost in a lift shift condition. So we're off the throttle but this rally anti-lag is in place to be able to keep the boost up between shifts. As soon as we come back on the throttle it'll immediately shut off and the boost will be there instantaneously. You can think of this just as a normal anti-lag effect but it's happening as we're in lift shift conditions rather than full throttle conditions trying to build the boost or get up to the boost that we want to launch at or in rolling anti-lag so where we want to actually uh, be at and boost when we want to go and race somebody so we're not waiting for the boost to build. So same kind of concept it's just going to be in the opposite way that we would normally think it's applied. It's on lift throttle conditions. All right, let's go and take a look at how to set this up. It's extremely easy. I'm going to show a demonstration of how this is going to work. All right, let's go here into our start menu and we're going to move down here under motorsport. 
We have our different options. We have anti-lag, which is the, roll, the, the rally anti-lag we're talking about in this video. We have our launch control and then rolling launch control. We've covered these in separate training tutorials in our Max ECU training course. Let's move in here into our anti-lag function. Right now it's set to disable. Let's go here and turn it into the enable status. And we can see that we have all of our drop downs here start to appear. Now it looks like there's a lot of tables to program and there is a bunch of things we need to account for, but it's really not complicated as we're going to find. Now the enable method, we have an option to put a switched input or always active. Now if you're in a true rally car or a true road course car where you're not going to be ever operating um, off those kind of track conditions, you probably want to set it to always active. But if you have a car that you may be doing dual duty between um, on and off the track, so you may not be dedicated track vehicle, you might want to set this to a switched input. And a switched input requires us to go and set up a toggle switch wired into a digital input. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.